he's this incredible physical specimen. Specimen. He has four football players hold him hold over, their over their heads and drop him from a height of seven Adam feet. Adam Archuleta, a skinny linebacker. He has to he's land ridiculous. in a Adam position. Adam Strange in a strange way. They drop him. They drop weights on and Adam drop Archuleta. him to a height of seven he's feet. Doing things that are just unheard of. Training the body like a machine. That's what I've always wanted to do. The reason why Jay's techniques work is because we want to get very, very strong. Go! But we want to be able to apply it on a field. Go! It's a design system and everything is put in its place. Go! To work as a progression and to build on whatever you did the day before. It's fun. With the 20th selection, the St. Louis Rams have chosen defensive back from Arizona State, Adam Archuleta. Well, when I first wanted to be a pro athlete, I wanted to be uh, in the NFL. It wasn't a question of what sport I wanted to play. But I remember when I was, you know, about four or five years old, I was watching a game with my dad. It was one of the first games I had watched. And uh, I just told him, I said, hey, dad, you know, I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. And that just, uh, from that day on, I really stuck with it. You know, everything was geared towards getting to that goal. I had heard about Jay through a magazine. I was about 16 years old. I had tried everything. I liked to read. I wanted to know more about training. I wanted to get faster. I wanted my bench press to, you know, increase. And, you know, I wanted what everybody wants when they're young. You know, you want to be fast and you want to bench a lot of weight. That was my priority. That's what I thought was going to make me a good football player. The first impression, I walked into the gym and he didn't say anything positive to me. He basically just told me that uh, I was nothing. For about two hours, he, you know, he berated me. And basically, I think he was testing my mental toughness to see if this was really what I wanted to do. The first result, and I think at the age group I was in, obviously was my bench press went up. That's the first thing I saw. That's really what was important to me at the time. I look back and it really doesn't mean anything at all. But, you know, you want your bench press to go up. There's a lot of people who could bench a lot of weight, squat a lot of weight, but they can't play. And we kind of took that focus off. We want to get very, very strong, but we want to be able to apply it on a field, whether it's a basketball court, a football field, a baseball diamond, whatever it is. I wasn't born with anything. I had some abilities, but we really, it, Jay brought it out of me. He brought the potential out. And that's really what we're trying to do in training, is get the most out of our genetic potential we can. It's a design system and everything is put in its place to work as a progression and to build on whatever you did the day before. Not just, I read this in a book and let's try this because somebody got results. Training doesn't work like that. Life doesn't work like that you really need to know what you're doing and you need to know how to organize it and that's what Jay does. Hi, my name is Jay Schroeder. What I'd like to do today is introduce you to evolutionary training. And I believe that this system of training can take the average person from looking awkward or being weak in certain areas, being slow, not having a powerful jump to the level where they can compete at an extremely high level. With the help of Adam and a few other of the professional athletes that we train, I'd like to go ahead and demonstrate some of these exercises for you. Okay, the first exercise we're going to do for you this session is called low squat foot jump. When doing this exercise, you want to make sure that you schedule your repetitions around how good your technique is, how good your form is. We can always make it a difficult uh, in any way. We can put a lunge with it, we can jump off of it, but the important thing is that you stop, you cease the exercise when the technique is not correct so that we don't learn it wrong. Okay, Adam, what we're going to do is going to get down in a low squat, lower legs perpendicular to the ground, make sure you lift your legs from the hip flexor as we jump, okay? We're going to go for 10 seconds. Ready? Begin. 
Higher, higher, higher. Pick your legs up. Pick your legs up. Pick them up. Pick them up. Pick them up. That's it. Shh. Pick them up. That's it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Pick them up. Pick them up. Good. What we're trying to do with this exercise here is teach him how to absorb energy into the Achilles, the calf, and the foot. Those are limiting factors when we're trying to run fast and or jump high or be explosive in whatever lower body movement it might be. If he can efficiently absorb energy in there and then transfer it to another movement, he's going to propel himself down a field of play very quickly and then be able to switch directions whenever he needs to. The next exercise we're going to do is just we're going to add a little bit to the low squat foot jump. This time what we're going to do is add a vertical jump. So on command, he's going to jump into the air and land in a lunge position. Okay, let's turn to the side on him. We're going to start with the right leg. We're going to make uh, two jumps on each side. Okay, make sure the lower leg stays straight up and down and you lift from the hip flexor. And when you jump, there's no hesitation. Okay, ready? Begin. Go! Right back to it. Good. Go. Good. Go. Good. Go. Right to the squat. Good. Go. Good. Try not to hesitate. Go. Last one. Go. Stop. Good. Good, again, what we were doing right there is just putting a little twist on the low squat foot jump. Giving him another task, an explosive task. And then he had to absorb all that force he created by jumping into the air. And then gravity pulling him back down. Which is exactly what's gonna happen on a field of play. If he has to bend over, or drop his heel to the ground, or twist, or move his upper torso, he's not gonna be able to move efficiently and make a play. And if he can absorb a lot of force, that means he can create a lot of force which will propel him down the field of play, or on a long jump, or a vertical jump, or whatever it might be. Our next exercise is low squat foot jumps with another little twist. This is my favorite, but I'm sure it's not Adam's. What we're going to do is we're going to place a speed rush and lunge with the low squat foot jumps. All right, Adam. In a low squat uh, position, make sure lower legs stay straight up and down, okay? Balls of the feet, lift your legs high. When I say go, it's a speed rush and lunge out and then back immediately, right back into low squat foot jumps. Begin. Again, this exercise right here is going to translate to getting down the field quickly, under control, moving over objects, around objects, so that he can still chase down the person he needs to chase down. Speed quickness right here. Well, it's a lot different than what anyone's ever trained for. All right, guys, the next exercise is a staple of our program. Once we've taken our squat up where we've determined we don't need to squat any heavier, we now try and use that strength and apply it to creating force very quickly. And I call this exercise a Russian lunge. And what we're going to do is get in a lunge position and propel ourselves as high into the air as we can. Okay, Adam, we're going to take a double bounce. On every command go, you'll do one. Okay, double bounce, land, 
absorb the force, stop, and I'll say go again. All right, ready? Remember, double bounce. Go. Stop. Good. Go. Good. Double bounce. Go. Up. Stop. Good. Go. Stop. Good. Nice, very nice. Now you want to remember that you do these on both sides. We don't want to run with a limp. <laughs> okay, the thing you want to look for when he was doing that was, did he drop his hips? Did he fold forward? No, he absorbed that force into the tendons, the ligaments, and the muscles. So that he can use it to propel himself in a direction. And that's what we want to do in athletics. What this does is it helps me absorb force. When a running back cuts, I can make that cut just as quickly as he can. So this exercise here is going to allow us to learn how to absorb force in the lower torso. And they're called altitude drops. We're going to step off of the box, making sure that we land in a biomechanically correct position for what we want to work. In this case, it's the hamstring, so we land low. Okay, Adam, just go ahead and step up on top of the box. We're just going to step off. I'm going to make sure you land with your lower legs perpendicular, upper body flat. Okay. Ready? And go. Good. Let's do it again. Now, naturally, what should happen is he should land on the balls of his feet, and then he should drop back to his heel, so he should actually fall backwards. Now, he's not trying to go backwards, but because of the natural occurrence of the exercise, he will fall backwards. Okay. Good. In our system of training, learning how to absorb force is paramount. It is the most important thing. This exercise is going to teach you to absorb forces necessary to run, and jump, at high speeds and long distances. The next couple of exercises we would like to show you are just kind of fun can show you what can happen if you follow this training program all the way through, meet each of the requirements of the previous steps. And Adam's going to demonstrate for us an advanced version of the altitude drop. He's going to jump off of a 48-inch high box, making sure that he lands in the same position he did off of the 24-inch box. Do not just start off by trying to do this. You can get hurt if you're not able to absorb the amount of force that's created by gravity pulling his body down from about six feet high. Okay, Adam. Ready? Ready. Make sure you stop solid. Very nice. That's exactly what you'd want to see. Now, he was almost six feet high in the air after he jumped and he landed. The forces he created were three and a half or four times what he did off of the other box. And that's what you'll be able to do if you follow this program all the way through its conclusion. Okay, just for a little fun, let's show you the ultra advanced stage of what Adam does with this exercise. He's not only going to jump into the air, but now he's going to land in a lunge. Again, we need to see that he lands in the proper position. You determine how many you're going to do based on if you're landing in the right position. Do not do repetitions with poor form. Okay, Adam. Make sure you stop solid. Okay, look straight ahead. Mm -hmm. okay, ready? Ready. Good. That was a good repetition. We utilize the force of gravity, jumping high into the air, letting gravity enact upon our bodies, pulling us down, and we absorb a lot more than what they can squat. And that's one reason the, the training is so effective for gaining muscle mass, losing fat, uh, losing inches.
Welcome back. We've taken a little time to rest, and now we're ready for the next section of the workout, which will begin with legs, starting with hamstrings, which is our priority. The hamstrings are one of the limiting factors on being able to run fast. If you hope someday to have speed, what you want to do is make sure you have powerful, strong hamstrings. What we want to do is make sure that the hamstrings are strong enough, have enough strength endurance and velocity endurance to be able to endure all of those things throughout a game and a competitive season. The glute ham exercise is definitely responsible for my increase in speed, jumping abilities, just going out on the field and being able to perform. I don't think you can do that with just any standard exercise in the gym. We're hung up on hamstrings because when you land, every time you take a step in every sport that you propel yourself, you absorb four to six times your body weight on one leg. If your hamstring cannot absorb that force, you are going to have problems running, jumping, propelling yourself in any other direction. Stop. Six. Good. Oh, you guys throw hard. Yeah, it's hard to stop when you push hard. Now the EDI, explosive dynamic isometric, does it mean anything in a specific order? No. It's the components of what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish and we just gave it a, a little acronym is all we did. Um, you can call it anything you want. Most of them call it here, oh no. In a training session, we'll do as high as 200 or 300 glute hams and we'll do multiple training sessions per day. Be good. Oh. Okay, I'll take the dumbbell at the end of the hold. Okay. Ready? Go. Begin. And what we're showing here is when you get to be a little too strong for two people holding you, we then begin to hold some weight. And since we're looking for speed of repetitions of velocity on these, I'll take the weight. Go. <coughs> We never let the exercise become comfortable. We're always working at maximal effort. The important factors on this exercise right here, does he hold himself in position? Is his head up? Is his back flat? Squeezing with the hamstrings and glutes, not throwing himself up with his upper body. Good, that's it. What we're going to do now are ISO one-legged squats. We're going to train the hip flexor again. We're interested in obtaining speed. We're not interested in looking like a bodybuilder. We're not interested in moving huge loads. We're interested in being able to absorb force, turn our legs over quickly, and be very athletic. And this is what we do for hip flexor endurance. Okay, right leg up. All right, let's go ahead and down. We're five on, five off routine. Only we're starting with 10. And down. What we're looking for is to make sure that the upper thigh of the back leg is perpendicular to the ground so you feel a good stretch through the hip flexor all through here. Okay. The other leg is just to relax to balance. Ready? And down. 
You know, we're looking to make sure that the upper body is erect, that the uh, abdomen is contracted, that they're looking straight ahead. Position that will transfer onto the field of play. At about this point, it starts to get pretty hard. <laughs> Relax. Ready? And down. We don't wear any headphones. We don't play any music. We make sure we're in the right position. Relax. Be one more. And down. When people have observed Adam, and they walk around and he moves around, they say, oh, he appears to be tight. But when he goes out on the field and he performs athletic skills, football skills, they're amazed at the range of motion that he has. It's because he's used to keeping the muscles in extension. He can use them in extension, which means he has a greater opportunity to create force, a greater opportunity to create force more quickly, and a, a greater opportunity to prevent and eliminate the hamstring pulls, the quad pulls, the calf problems, the Achilles problems that athletes experience from a lack of preparation in their training program. Relax. Shake your leg out, and then we'll go to the other side. And remember, we move very fast when a muscle is in extension. Okay, left leg up. Begin. Scoop by Good. It doesn't matter who's in their way. It doesn't matter if they have to go around someone. They can make those adjustments very easily. Relax. When we go onto the field, it's easy. Everything is easy compared to what we do in the gym. Again, it's the totality of the training that we do. It's not one exercise. It's not one set of sets and reps or methodics as we call it. It's everything and how it complements each other. We use strengths and weaknesses because not everybody is gonna be at the highest level of everything. And that's not what we should strive for. What we should strive for is how they interact to produce movement. And to produce movement that's efficient and looks pretty on an athletic field. What I want to show you now and take a little bit of time doing is showing you some exercises that can really help improve your bench press and give you that big bench press and also allow you to do that 225 rep max or that 185 rep max, whatever it is we have to do uh, very efficiently. Okay, Adam, we're going to get in a push-up position on the boxes here. Okay, we're going to do three dynamic pushes into the air. Then after the third one, you're going to propel your whole body into the air and then land back behind you. He wants to make sure that he lands in proper position. His chest should not sink to the floor. His body should remain flat. His shed, head should remain up. Whole body. Whole body into the air. Right. Even on the... Yes, on the dynamics, whole body and whole body when we move back. Three? Three. Ready? Ready. Good. What we're looking for right here, that his head is in line with his body. His upper arms are parallel to the floor and his body is flat. That's the position we have to land in, and he does not sink to the floor. Good, Adam. What we're looking for again is how high does he propel himself into the air, how efficiently, and what kind of position does he land in. And it's a similar to our double bounce Russian lunge, only now for the upper body. What we're going to do now is one of their favorite exercises. Again, we need to make sure that the shoulders, uh, the whole upper torso and the shoulder girdle is in shape. And we're going to do what we call EDI, uh, close grip bench presses. And it's just a name that I gave to it. You could give whatever you want. I call it explosive dynamic isometrics. All right, here we go. All right. 
All right, ready? Here we go. What we want to do is hold him at the extreme angle, as low a position as we can for the chest. He should be pushing as hard as he can. When we release him, go. He should go up as quick as he can. Six. Go. Three. One. Two. Three. Go. Good. Yeah, six, three, one. Close grip. Close grip. Close grip. Perfect. Ready? I know. <laughs> In theory, what is probably happening is that the weakest muscle fibers are getting fatigued and he's calling upon more powerful muscle fibers in order to do the same job. Go. Last set. going to do as we call them rebound push-ups but we're going to propel the whole body off of the floor and then come back to the iso hold wow, close grips ready you can't hold me <laughs> yes <clears throat> there you go he's full of spunk oh brian huh? all right here we go great yep. <laughs> but I won't be here on the oh. second set. <laughs> what we want to make sure we do is not shove him into his chest, but just keep him from coming up. <clears throat> Good. <clears throat> See you later. Yeah, that should be all right. <laughs> okay, make sure you keep your body flat. That's it. When we're fatigued, Ready. when we get injured, Up. that's when the muscles go into contraction. Mm. And we want to eliminate that. So that's why we follow mm. each set of the work with an isometric, keeping the muscle group being worked, get in extension. Here we go. An ultimate. <laughs> What we're looking for on here is that he maintains a flat body position, head stays up, and that when he lands, he doesn't sink. One thing I want to explain is that what we're doing by holding the bar down near his chest is training the pectorals in extension, where they're at their longest, and forcing him to be under a load at that time. Then we go and we apply then the high speed, high load of the rebound push up. Good. Last set. That should be all right. Okay, last six. Let's go. Make it all the way through. Good. 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 Come on. Good. Whew. We've been extremely successful at burning fat for fuel with this kind of training as long as we maintain the maximal effort.
Next exercise is one of my all-time favorites for the upper body, and I know it's one of Adam's. It's an advanced version of what we just saw on the push-up. We affectionately call it a rebound bench press. And it encompasses versions of plyometrics and heavy benches and all kinds of things. But it's what really allows us to handle a lot of weight on a regular basis without overtraining. Okay, Adam, we're going to do a uh, set of three. Okay. Make sure you keep it over your body. The things we want to look for on this exercise are similar to what we looked for on the bench press. Were his arms in the right position? Did the bar sink to his chest? Did he maintain his chest elevation, his feet into the floor? Again, as with every exercise we do, if we want to translate this to on the field explosion, on the field speed, on the field power, then we must stay in the correct position, no matter what load we're using, whether it's heavy or whether it's light. To give you an idea of, of what we're doing here and how this translates onto the field, uh, it was described to me that Adam creates so much force in such a short amount of time that he could punch at you, knock your head off before you could react from seeing it come at you. This is called a rebound. It's a version of a plyometric exercise where we drop the dumbbell. If you notice the sound they're making when their hand contacts that dumbbell, that's what you want to hear. You want to hear the hand meeting it. You stop the weight, then you accelerate it back to the starting position. Good. Okay, let's go rebound on the other side. Whenever you catch a falling load, you shut off your protective mechanisms so that you contract very powerfully. And what we do then is we not only catch that load, but then in theory, we come back up with it at high velocity. So we train high load and high velocity at the same time. It's one reason, again, that we're very effective in changing the metabolism, either for weight gain or for weight loss. The other thing about doing things where you drop the loads, you'll see the whole shoulder turns on, not just the anterior deltoid. What we're doing here is providing isometric workload for him. He tosses the weight. As the plate comes back down into his hands, it's accrued more energy from gravity acting upon it. So he's got to catch that, stop it, and then go back up into the spotter. Good. Harder, harder. little variation of the exercise that we just did. Sorry. Basically, it just makes it a little more fun. Same principle. We're absorbing that energy and then tossing, stopping it, tossing it back in another direction. This will be the last one. Good. And relax. Be one more. Good. I said it. This will be it right here. What we've been doing is showing you a few variables of the same exercise. And we're going to do another one now where they work one arm. 
but they're going to be performing a bicep exercise in the opposite arm. Ready? Go. <coughs> curl more, Adam. Curl more. That's it. <coughs> Good. Other side. Yeah, Return. Begin. Don't drop it, BJ. I'm right in your sights. <coughs> What we're going to do now in the next segment of the training is give you an example of our bicep training. Again, we're going to place the muscle in extension. We're going to go for one minute. You're going to extend his arm all the way out, curl the wrist, and then he'll hold that position for one minute. We try and work our way up with a light weight up to five minutes before we begin doing this. At different segments of the training, we'll have weight on the bar. This depends on which energy system we want to train, what we're trying to accomplish at the time. <laughs> As you can see, it gets quite hard, even for somebody that's very experienced at doing it. Okay, when you start to get tired, muscles relax, the bar starts to dip, what we're really looking for on here is how long they can hold the bar in this position balanced for. This is our primary bicep exercise. We do it for a couple reasons. First, we need to make sure that we balance um, the bicep with the tricep, pulling muscles with pushing muscles. And second, the better you feel about the way you look, sometimes the better you perform. So there's a little vanity in this exercise right here. If you feel strong, you're generally going to perform strong. So as strict as we try and stay, we do allow a little vanity training here. Even though the size of the muscle isn't necessarily what determines how strong you are or how fast you're going to move. The next exercise that Adam's going to perform and display for you, we call rebound curl. Now, yes, it does have a benefit for athletics, but to tell you the truth, this is mostly a vanity exercise. If you feel good about the way you look, it helps you to train. And if it helps you to train harder and or more often, put more into your training, then that's what we want to get. And this is our exercise to do that. Okay, Adam. I'm going to do six reps, rebound curl. Again, as in all the other rebound type exercises we do, he wants to pull his arms down, then drive them back up to meet the bar. There's going to be a brief moment where the bar stops, and then he accelerates it back to the top. As you catch the bar, the shoulders turn on, the pectoralis minor turns on, all of the muscles of the upper arm, the upper chest, shoulder area will all turn on. Training the body like a machine. 
That's what I've always wanted to do. Go! Stay low. Go! Go all the way through, Kobe. Go! I want them to be able to move without having to have an extreme preceding movement, without having to bend their knee to jump up. They can just go. Well, when I first wanted to be a pro athlete, I wanted to be uh, in the NFL. It wasn't a question of what sport I wanted to play. But I remember when I was, you know, about four or five years old, I was watching a game with my dad. It was one of the first games I had watched. And uh, I just told him, I said, hey, Dad, you know, I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. From that day on, I really stuck with it. And I, you know, everything was geared towards getting to that goal. I designed my organization of these exercises. Again, I didn't invent anything, but I organized them in a way that I can coach kids to make them do what it is they want to do and train them to be able to do it over and over. And again, we absorb force. We drop to the ground either on our upper bodies, on the lower bodies. We drop dumbbells, we drop barbells, and we catch them. And we stop them. And then we need to make sure, did we drop, did we catch, did we stop in the right position to be able to do some movement in whatever direction that we need to go. That's, that's what it is we do. It's fun. I had heard about Jay through a magazine. I was about 16 years old. I had tried everything. I liked to read. I wanted to know more about training. I wanted to get faster. I wanted my bench press to, you know, increase. And, you know, I wanted what everybody wants when they're young. You know, you want to be fast and you want to bench a lot of weight. That was my priority. That's what I thought was going to make me a good football player. Adam called me. He had read an article that I wrote. Um, I think it was about bench press. And it just stuck to my mind and I wanted to learn more about it. And he called, said he talked to the supplement company, and they said, well, the guy you want to talk to is right in your neighborhood. So he called, and in fact, he came down that evening. It was rough. Uh, the first impression, I walked into the gym, and he didn't say anything positive to me. He basically just told me that uh, I was nothing. His demeanor was cocky. He came in, and he was going to tell me what to do. So for about two hours, he, you know, he berated me. And basically, I think he was testing my mental toughness to see if this was really what I wanted to do. I put him down a few pegs, I guess, <laughs> um, because I wanted to see, does this guy really want to improve, or is he just telling me he does? Because words are cheap, and actions are what's really important. Uh, so he, you know, he wrote programs for me, didn't allow me to work out in his gym, but I had to go on my own. I gave him the opportunity, I gave him programs, sent him on his way. He kept wanting to come in and train. I said, no, we're not ready yet. No, we're not ready yet. Forced me to make a training log, record my diet, record time every lift that I did, record my sleep, my rest, everything about life I had to put down in a log and give to him, basically to prove to him that I was really ready to do what I wanted to say, what I said I wanted to do. Uh, and it took him about six months before he let me uh, work out in his gym. And when I saw that he really was going to follow through on what we wanted to do, it appeared that he really wanted to accomplish, not just say he wanted to accomplish it. Then I went ahead, let him into the gym, and fortunately for me, I did. The reason why Jay's techniques work, and it's not a gimmick, is because it's a progression. It's a system. It's not, hey, I went to a seminar and I learned this, so let's try this. It's a design system and everything is put in its place to work as a progression and to build on whatever you did the day before. Not just, I read this in a book and let's try this because somebody got results. Training doesn't work like that. Life doesn't work like that. You really need to know what you're doing and you need to know how to organize it and that's what Jay does. The first thing kids need to do in order to improve their probability of becoming an athlete is to have a wide base. They need to do a little bit of everything. The first result, and I think at the age group I was in, obviously was my bench press went up. That's the first thing I saw. That's really what was important to me at the time. I look back and it really doesn't mean anything at all. But, you know, you want your bench press to go up. So we believe in the whole body being trained every session, whether we train once a day, twice, three or four times a day. The whole body is always trained. There's a lot of people who could bench a lot of weight, squat a lot of weight, but they can't play. 
And we kind of took that focus off. We want to get very, very strong, but we want to be able to apply it on a field, whether it's a basketball court, a football field, a baseball diamond, whatever it is. And that's when I started seeing my results as an athlete is when I stopped caring about numbers. So it's hard to say really what I bench now because it really doesn't mean anything. So it's what you do and how you do it, not how much of it you do. Not only did I get immediate results, but I knew that we were on a long-term plan and I trusted that he knew what he was talking about and that I would peak when I was in the NFL. We use here the model that the will to prepare for success is more important than the will for success. The better you're prepared, the higher the peak, the greater the performances that you're going to have later on when they count. Does it really matter if in 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade, ninth grade that you're the superstar? A lot of people stress that high school is so important. You have to do this by your senior year. You have to get these things accomplished, but the body isn't ready. And the slower you take to develop, the longer your career is going to be. But by the time we're out of high school and getting into college, when it's time to really reap the benefits of a career in athletics, that's when you want to be good. So we try and gear everything to come together at this point in time. I was entering my senior year in high school. We didn't talk about, oh, we have to do this by next year. We have to run a Ford, whatever it was, by next year. Jay told me, he said, if you want to be serious about working out with me, we're going to create a training plan so that you're starting to peak when you're 23, 24 years old. He said, well, this is for the long term, and this is what you want to be. You want to be at your best when you're in the NFL, not your senior year in high school. The results of watching Adam achieve his success were awesome. I mean, it was one of the top five things that's ever happened in my life. All I saw was consistent improvement. And in seven years, I've never hit a peak. I've never hit a plateau. I've recovered from injuries. I've been injured very, very rarely. And we just keep getting better and better and better. Not only am I getting better in my lifts, but on the field as an athlete, my improvement has never stopped. And to watch it all come together, it really makes you believe that you can do almost anything you want. Uh, I know it's impossible to do anything you want, but things that are within reason, like becoming an athlete, totally under our control. If you prepare to do that, and Adam just proved it over and over to me and inspired me to want to train other young athletes to get where they said they wanted to be. I wasn't born with anything. I had some abilities, but we really, it, Jay brought it out of me. He brought the potential out. And that's really what we're trying to do in training is get the most out of our genetic potential we can. And, and Adam's nothing special. He was a normal human being with normal desires. And he peaked it a little bit and, and took it to another level. But we all can do that. We all have that inside of us. And if we get started training properly, learn proper body position, learn how to absorb force, you can do anything you want.